Hi, I'm Becca, I'm from Northern New Hampshire, and I'm a UN science major at UNH. Hi, I'm Lex, and I'm from Merrimack, New Hampshire, and I'm also a senior at the UNH Decline Science Program. And this is Clem, one of UNH's lesson horses. And today we're going to talk to you about caring for your horse's teeth and dental diseases. Talking about the molars and the premolars, as these horses chew, the molars grind against each other, wearing down the tooth. And because the horse has a larger upper jaw and a smaller lower jaw and they chew in that motion, sometimes um, or oftentimes they form these things called hooks or points on the cheek side of their upper molars and the tongue side of their lower molars. And these can cause ulcers in the mouth or on the tongue and can become very uncomfortable for horses and can affect the way that they chew and eat and even ride with a bit and so regular floating will address this problem but in the case that it becomes too severe um, it can be f helped with floating and these horses may require a specialty diet severe examples of this include wave mouth or step mouth and this can be due to again uneven wear of the teeth from chewing extra or missing teeth a misaligned jaw or horses that crib um, this can cause pain, swelling, ulcers, and food dropping. So to fix this, veterinarians will bring tools like rasps and files and floats to file down those hooks or uneven wear of the molars and premolars in the horse's mouth to avoid things like ulcers on the tongue or on the cheeks. Um, and they are sometimes floated yearly or twice a year to promote the wear of the even teeth, but it depends on your horse and if they have any dental abnormalities. are an issue that affect horses and can become debilitating and affect any riding career or comfort of the horse if not addressed. Dental health and maintenance such as routine floating are an important thing to assess prior or new issues in the horse's mouth that can cause pain, discomfort, infection, and disease. 
Most horses over the age of 12 will need at least some sort of tooth or gum care that will need to be addressed due to an ongoing tooth or gum problem. Furthermore, 60% of those horses worldwide will develop severe dental disease that will require veterinary intervention if not addressed earlier on. Some symptoms of dental disease include extra salivation, unwillingness to come onto the bit or take contact, quitting, which is the dropping of bald food or hay, ulcers on the gum or on the tongue, loss of body condition, foul odor from the mouth or the nose, and red or swollen gums. Here are some specific examples of dental issues and how they can be treated. One of the first dental diseases that we will be talking about today is gingivitis, which is also known as periodontal disease. It is one of the most common gum diseases and can be caused by genetics, disease, poor diet, or malocclusion, which is the imperfect positioning of the teeth in the mouth. This can cause tooth decay and teeth may need to be extracted. Furthermore, the horse, when assessed by a veterinarian, will need to be put on antibiotics or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, which are also called NSAIDs, that are need to combat infection or inflammation due to this disease. The next disease we'll be talking about will be EOTRH or equine odontoclastic tooth reabsorption, which is a dental disease in which horses will have resorptive lesions on their incisors and canine teeth. And as this disease progresses, the roof of the teeth basically dissolve and the body tries to lay down um, an extra layer of cementum, which is what makes up teeth and tries to stabilize these teeth. And this results in a symptom called hypercementosis due to the buildup of cementum, which the extra laid on top of it can result in fracture, abscesses, and infections. And symptoms of this disease include weight loss, red gums, bad smell or foul odor from the mouth, discomfort in the bridle. And the only way to treat this disease is to extract the affected teeth and to treat with antibiotic and NSAIDs again. For a real life example of this, there is a horse at my own barn who is named Carrie and He's one of two horses who is diagnosed with ERTRH and lives a perfectly normal life except for the fact that he has no top incisors. And after the surgery, he needed to have wet food and soaked hay for about two weeks. Um, but on top of that, he can still be ridden with a bit and can eat solid food and hay and grain now and now does not live in pain anymore. Other deformities such as parrot mouth, aka an overbite, and monkey mouth, aka an underbite, or even extra teeth can result in abnormal wear and may require more frequent dentals and floatings with extraction and a specialized diet. L lastly, tooth decay is when the inner soft center of the teeth become infected. Trauma, bacteria, gum disease play roles in the cause of this disease. This may progress up to the sinuses and become a worse infection. Um, extraction is recommended of the decaying teeth and the administration of NSAIDs and antibiotics that are appropriate is also recommended. Good. We're here now at the UNIT Farm facility where we have some horses with dental abnormalities that we'd like to take a look and show you. So this is Storm. He's one of UNH's lesson horses. He's 21 years old and he has a missing incisor. So we're going to take a look and show you. Okay. Missing teeth can affect the oral and overall health of your horse. Whether the tooth is missing due to removal or injury, it causes a change in the remaining teeth. The angle at which the tooth comes out of the gum for the remaining teeth changes to compensate for the missing tooth, as can be seen with Storm's upper incisors. This change occurs when the missing tooth is not present to create that barrier for the other teeth and they will grow up towards the nearest tooth to stop its growth. This angle difference causes a misalignment between the top and bottom teeth as well, which can create uneven wear on the teeth as the horse chews. The tooth opposing a missing tooth can grow longer than its neighboring teeth due to the lack of the other tooth grinding and wearing it down. This will cause uneven wear on the teeth and difficulty chewing for the horse. A tooth that grows too long may also cause jaw pain and interfere with the bit when used in the horse. If your horse has a missing tooth, it is very important to routinely check and float teeth to ensure proper tooth wear and chewing ability. One of the most common undesired behavior that affects a horse's teeth is cribbing. 
Cribbing is when a horse uses their upper incisors to hook onto a solid horizontal object and suck in air while pulling back. Horses with these cribbing habits may have excessive tooth wear. This will cause the tooth to wear down at a faster rate than it would naturally. This can result in older horses having greater difficulty chewing food. As the horse is less able to chew and consume its food, it will begin to lose weight. Reducing a horse's cribbing habit through the use of collars, toys, or diet changes can help to improve overall tooth health, which then can improve the horse's overall health. If your horse cribs, special attention should be paid to the growth of the bottom incisors to ensure that they are not growing too long and interfering with the upper incisors or mastication. Whenever you're ready. Thank you for tuning into our video today and we hope that we could teach you a little bit more about equine dentistry. If you're interested in more horse related information, check out our classmates videos on our YouTube page.